Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our sale on the 26th of February. So last week we didn't have any furniture, and we, but I did say the sausage factory is rolling and the sausages will be coming in. And sure enough, this week we've got loads of furniture. We've got almost <laughs> too much, but one can never have too much if it's good enough. And spring is here, starting with lot 189. Look at this, just to prove it. We've got crocuses coming up, the rebirth of the furniture and garden statuary market of the year. Oh, I like how uh, you did that. There we go, yeah. yes. Right, so let's go inside, see what's, uh, what's to be had in this marvellous cell. So in the door, first thing that bang hits the eye, look at this, lot 168, this uh, carved stone or sandstone perhaps uh, it looks like a keystone the shape of it fabulous sort of green man type head he's magnificent lot 168 he's great isn't he he's come from a property boy. in northamptonshire um but local local customer brought it back down to us uh super thing that really nice i think that's going to go very well it ticks the decorators boxes i believe uh, other things from the same property alongside it and then further sort of garden and uh, ornamental uh items perhaps of not quite such desirable interest but still fun enough such as these masks like 164 yeah those are sort of reproduction ones 161 there's a sort of gargoyle ridge tile fellow um, and various other bits so have a good look at that what else have we got well we've got lots we've got over 200 lots of furniture but drifting down this way to give you a flavor there's an HMV gramophone with some old 78s to go with it. Football interest. There is a painted metal weather vane. Nice early sort of footballer look. A most unusual sort of daybed bookcase affair, all painted up. Don't see many of those. Lot 45. Next to it, lot 44. A splendid centre sort of breakfast loo table. Um, beautifully done rosewood. Look at these feet. Amazing feet, good example there. Uh, over here, how about a sort of Anglo-Indian, Ceylonese perhaps, um, Sutherland table, inlaid with these specimen woods. These will all be the different hardwoods available out there. Lot 41. Carrying on, well, plenty as always, marble top washstands, unusual bookcases, various old oak furniture, a bit of mid-century, Bit of mid-century for your money there as well. Some nice Windsor chairs. Lot 16. Then, drifting round the corner and heading back this way, still trying to give you a flavour of the, In the variety. Sunshine. In the sunshine. Yeah. It's streaming through the windows here. Yeah. Um, here we are. That's a curious lot. Not quite sure how this all goes together. Lot 81, we have some painted cricket candlesticks. Then you get a sort of spoon rack with pewter spoons. Um, and then another object, which I'm sure we've identified, it's almost like an African headrest, but not quite, something along those lines, uh, all sitting upon a table that's a different number, lot 82 down below it. Nice spindle turned chair there, lot 83, it was finely done. Um, and then we've got some music, mechanical music items sort of further down. Here's uh, lot 58. Here's uh, one of these little, um, almost like travelling organs, sometimes these completely flat pack, I'm not sure this one does entirely, but one pumps the pedal and you can play Diabelli's melodious exercises or anything else you want to play, lot 58, in working condition, bone keys please note, not ivory, uh, and then if that's a little too bass for you, how about lot 57, this rather splendid uh, harpsichord, look at that, marquetry inlay, these things are always rather beautifully made. Come look at the keyboard, come around here. Thank you very oh, much. Gosh. There we are, Giovanni Basso, the maker, all inlaid in hardwood. These are often ivory, so it's nice to see one fully in, fully in hardwood. Give you an idea, needs a bit of work by the looks of things. Some of the keys are a little compressed, shall we say. Uh, and then of course there's some taxidermy as well. Looking very surprised to be here. Uh, this fellow, I think he's in uh, lot 92 with, uh, with his chum there. Gosh. Um, and, and then just beyond it, as, as, the, as the antler comes away, let's get back on, there we are, comedy moment. Uh, and then here, um, not a beaver, lot 90, some sort of kakibara or large rat. Uh, you wouldn't want to find that behind your garden shed or anywhere else for that matter. So there we go, a whole array of different furniture for you. Really good lot. Come and have a look as always. Always best of you in person if you can. And we're going to look at the smalls. Okay, so here we are in the smalls room. What have we got this time? Well, not a bad mixture for you. A few interesting things. I've noticed that 
the sort of collection of different Dalton wares have come in. And here's something you don't see every day. This little teapot is a Dalton, um, I believe it's called agate ware. We've got the stamp here, Dalton and Rick's patent, marquetry ware. There we go, marquetry. And what makes it marquetry? Well, this is made from clay. So they've got this sort of marbled effect here. And then this incredible sort of trellis cross pattern, which if you can see inside, yep. you can see goes all the way through. I mean, really so clever, clever work. That's lot uh, 264. Um, elsewhere, a more standard pair of Dalton Lambeth stoneware vases, 262. Uh, we've got then carrying on down another rather better doll, bit of doll. No, it might be Eliza Simmons. It's got an ES signature to the base. Nice sort of moon flask vase there. And that will date to around about 1880 or thereabouts, that sort of date. That's lot 251. Uh, jumping across, magically reappearing at the next aisle, still on the Dalton theme. How about this, lot 329? It's a whopper, isn't it? This is Dalton is. Faelanceware, another form of the sort of turn of the century, turn of 1900, sort of Dalton wares. And from the 1880s, again, they were producing these faience, sort of art pottery pieces. Massive great crack running through it. Old, old restored damage running right through there. It will keep the value down, lot 329. Now, how about some barge ware? We've got a big example there. Ah. Needs a bit of a wash. If you need two cups of tea at once, <laughs> we've got it. that novelty teapot <laughs> coming with a kettle. Oh. And the thing about bargeware was you could have it impressed with messages and names. So we've got a lot here that has one uh, from W. Palmer of London, 1882, I think that is. Uh, and in the same lot, um, Francis Whitehead, presented by mother, 1889. <laughs> there we go. So that's lot 306, should you want the uh, presented by mother jug. Uh, and then there's, there's more bargeware scattered through the sale. Reverse printed glass prints here there's not a slightly unusual one there different from the norm we've got some murano glass clowns we've got some big bottles of wine lot 318 and plenty of other wines as well scattered throughout the sale um drifting back down here and, and always looking to pick something out for you that you might want to be told about how about lot 341 it's not very fancy very fancy isn't mm. it so nice walnut case um, looks the business, doesn't it? it does. Now we look at the blades and we see they say EPNS electroplated nickel silver with silver bands just round there. That little bit is silver, a mother of pearl. So dessert eaters, um, of course, not overly fashionable these days. And, and this set looked like they've never really been overly fashionable because they've barely been used, if at all, by the looks of things. Perhaps one knife's a little bit wobbly. Um, so they don't make a huge amount of money these days because uh, what does one do with them? But there they are to be bought, lot 341. Next to them, a rather splendid pair of Royal Crown Derby vases, particularly good size. The flowers are hand painted. I can't see a signature on them. Um, sometimes the artists have, you know, get to a certain level of eminence where they do. Uh, we've got the marking underneath with a date code so you could work out the year they're made and you get two other bits with them. So that's lot 340. Mm. Next to them, not a bad little mortar, turned out of oak, perhaps not the most traditional timbers, little chip to it, 339, and coming with one of these Victorian stacking spice boxes, cloves, mace, etc. A little bit rubbed again. 363, some nice stained glass panels. And then to wet your whistle in the picture section, well, did you go to Eton? Because if you did, there's plenty of pictures for you of your alma mater or what have you. Lot 720. This is a lovely great big picture. Look at the Eton boys down the bottom in their top hats. Not signed, but we think Nora Davison. Um, and I'll explain why once I put this down. Very good size. So Nora Davison produced a lot of paintings of Eton College. There is one signed by Nora, so we know it's her. Um, and uh, in watercolour, it's got 721 from a completely different vendor. As coincidence would have it, 722 is also Eton College, but that is, and I look at the cheat, um, Cotton Hall House at Eton. So perhaps a slightly less common view than the, the regulars of the chapel and what have you. Uh, again, signed by Nora Davison. So there's a Nora Davison theme as well as an Eton theme. Other Eton, here's a Salis Benny watercolour. 
Um, and it says on the back, uh, what does it say on the back? It just says details of Salis Penny, but there we go, there's Salis Penny watercolour there, um, following on from that theme. Various other pictures to look at, more stained glass to look at, all sorts of other things. Last but not least, how about a summer helmet? Police don't wear summer helmets anymore, do they? That's, that's probably why, you know, the general view is policing is not what it used to be. If they issued them summer helmets, I'm sure the world would be a better place. This is Brighton Police summer helmet, modest size, small head, they did in those days, I'm told. Uh, that's got 413. Quick look in the strong room now. In the silver, quite a mixture, lots of it, uh, of all different shapes and sizes, but I've picked out for you um, lot 861. This is a Chinese Chatelaine, which is a somewhat unusual item. In sort of white metal, I think we might call it, we've talked about this before, sort of possibly very low grade silver. It's got Champleve enamel decoration and then various tools at the base. Um, more sort of, well, we, what have we got? Snuff spoon, tweezers, various other tools there. So a little bit unusual, that lot 861. Um, carrying on down and also unusual and much more fun, possibly, we've got a really good collection of pipes from the same home. Um, starting with lot 444, now a leather case, we always like a leather case. Who have we got inside? Napoleon. Look at that, and that's a proper whopper. I think we can safely say. Yes. So what is it made from? Well, traditionally, a lot of these plates are carved from meerschaum, which is not, a, it's, a, it's a relative of amber, and uh, one mines it out the ground and it carves very well. And it doesn't burn very well, which is the good thing, because it makes it ideal for the making of pipes, typically from Austria and that part of the world. So that's a particularly good size of Napoleon, sort of almost exhibition size. Um, what is definitely exhibition size is this one, it says so, Exhibition 1873 Vienna, we say lot 446, and there we go, there's a great big plain Meerschaum. Uh, so collectors in the main, what are they after? Well, they're after the curiosity of the subject matter. So these vary, there's another one with a nice sort of huntsman and hound um, showing there. Uh, plenty of others in the cell, some earlier examples here. So this is Meerschaum, but perhaps a little before they got into carving the sort of novelty heads and things. Um, white metal, in other words, silver mounted, with its original wibbly wobbly fitting. Um, so a lovely run of different pipes through that section of the sail. Um, and as always, all sorts of other bits and pieces to look at, just the jewellery to look at. So I've taken up too much of your time already, I'm sure, but quick look in the jewellery. Good selection of lots as ever, looks like 50 lots plus. So I'm just going to show you two things that caught my eye. 929, nice big amethyst ring there, diamond set, rather stylish design. Look at that. Two colours of gold or golden platinum, something like that. 929, so there's something a bit different. Also something funky and modern, relatively speaking. Lot 944, we love a leather case. Out it comes. What have we got here? Travelling watch. Who's it by? Jaeger Lecout. There we are. Smart dial. That little inner gilt hand is the alarm hand. So it's a travelling alarm clock. Alarm timepiece. Lot 944. Rather smart. Very stylish. As always, where else would you go for stylish things other than Goranges? Of course. So there we go. That's it. Lovely lot for you. Come along and have a good look at it. Up and running. Loads of goods for you to have a, a enjoy. Uh, if you're watching this on Monday, quick, get your fine sale goods into Goranges on Tuesday because that is your last day for the fine sale uh, deadline. Uh, so thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.